So you're looking into getting into sonography as a career. This is how you're going to start. So first things first is that you'll have to understand what sonography actually is. So sonography is basically ultrasound. So what ultrasound is, is a type of imaging modality where we use ultrasonic waves to take the best pictures that we can inside the human body. Some people don't know the correct term for it. For ultrasound, it is actually called diagnostic medical sonography. So that is what you are going to be going into school for. That's what you're gonna be Googling when you're looking at programs. Ultrasound is very user dependent. What the images you're getting on ultrasound is always dependent on the sonographer actually manipulating the transducer probe to take those pictures for the radiologist or doctor. Now that you know what ultrasound actually is, you're going to have to think about what type of ultrasound you want to get into. It's not all about just scanning babies. So there are three different types of sonography tracks that you go into. I'll also be explaining exactly what type of specialties you could go into under each one of these tracks. So this is very important when you're trying to look for a sonography program to kind of figure out what type of program they offer you. So the three different types of concentrations of sonography you get into is one, you could be a general sonographer. A general is considered a RDMS or a registered diagnostic medical sonographer. I'm an RDMS, so I chose the general track. The second track that you could go into is the vascular track or RVT, a registered vascular technologist. The third concentration that you go into is cardiac sonography, or some people call it echo sonography. Under echo slash cardiac sonography, you would be a RDCS, a registered diagnostic cardiac sonographer. So I'm gonna go over the first track, which is general. There are different types of specialties you go into underneath it, so many. The first one that I wanna get into is abdominal ultrasound. Abdominal ultrasound is basically doing ultrasound on everything on the human body except for the heart and veins. This all includes the abdominal content as far as like the organs. That includes the liver, kidney, spleen, aorta, pancreas, all of those things. But also with abdominal ultrasound, you are doing other things besides the abdominal cavity, such as thyroid exams, which is in your neck. You do do scrotal ultrasounds, which is the testicular ultrasound for the men, soft tissue ultrasound. The most common jobs that you could do with your abdominal registry is is that you can work in regular radiology and that could also include a hospital or an outpatient setting. So in a hospital you'd be dealing with a lot of like the ERs, all the inpatients, all the outpatients. So when you go through the general track for ultrasound you will be learning a lot of abdominal anatomy and physiology within it and what it looks like uh, sonographically. A good portion of your schooling will be about abdominal and OBGYN and everything else underneath the general track. Okay, so now that I covered abdominal ultrasound, we're gonna get into OBGYN ultrasound, which is probably what like everybody wants to get into. So if you wanna get into OBGYN as a specialty, I just want to tell you in advance, it's not all about scanning babies and rainbows and butterflies, okay? So OB stands for obstetric. What obstetrics is, is dealing with a pregnant woman, dealing with a fetus as well. Some people forget that OBGYN has the GYN part right after it, okay? So GYN is gynecology. Gy gynecolog gynecology. GYN is gynecology. So that basically deals with like the woman reproductive system. So of course like you can't just deal with a pregnant woman. You have to be able to deal with doing ultrasounds when a woman isn't pregnant. Uh, people think that you could just go ahead and just strictly scan babies and not have to deal with vaginas and all that. Sorry, you still have to learn it. Some examples of OB ultrasounds that you would be doing is maybe like pregnancy confirmations, first trimester screenings, full anatomy exams in their second trimester, third trimester growths. Some examples of GYN ultrasounds are checking on abnormal bleeding. If you have like any ovarian cysts, we like to follow up on them, check on them. As a OB GYN sonographer, you have the option to work in an outpatient setting like an OB GYN office, kind of just like at a pregnancy center uh, that us females go to for like our annual exam. Another thing that is under the RDMS credentials, which kind of falls hand in hand with OBGYN ultrasound specialty, is the fetal echo. So fetal echo can be considered under RDMS or under RDCS. Your main job is basically just to look at the fetus's heart, which the baby is still in mom's belly. So most of the time, a lot of OB sonographers do get fetal echo certified. You'd probably work more in like maternal fetal medicine setting, which is like high risk pregnancies. We do a lot of fetal echoes in there. That's like a good like extra credential to get into. Another 
specialty that you could go into under general RDMS is breast ultrasound. With breast ultrasound, you're strictly just looking at the human tissue of a woman's breast or even a man's breast. Sometimes what you could do with this type of specialty is work in like a breast specialist, specialist place, like a woman's health office. And then another specialty that you go into under general is pediatric sonography. Peds is basically the same thing as everything that we've talked about, like abdominal ultrasound, all those things. Um, that were under abdominal, but you're basically just doing it on a little kid. Like, honestly, it kind of sounds like really easy. You're just like, oh, if I could do it on an adult, I could do it on a kid. When you're younger, there's different things that aren't developed as much. They look completely different. And especially like if you want to work at like a children's hospital, then like pediatric sonography would probably be great for you. Some things that people don't consider when going into pediatrics, they're just like, ooh, I love kids. You have to deal with like the parent. You have to be really well-rounded in communicating with kids to like control them well enough to do an ultrasound. Especially with like abdominal ultrasound, you need the patient to be like very cooperative. All these specialties that I've talked about are what's included under your credentials. So all of these different type of specialty exams is what you could take in order to be an RDMS or a general sonographer. So you could do abdominal, OBGYN, fetal echo, breasts, and pediatrics. Alright guys, now that I am done talking about general, we are going to get into the second track that I was talking about, which is vascular. Basically, you are doing like a non-invasive ultrasound on the veins and the arteries. It's the arteriovascular system in our body. Basically, some things that you could evaluate as a RVT are some blood clots like DVTs, deep vein thrombosis in the legs or arms, exams like ruling out any aneurysms in your brain or even like in your carotid. With vascular you can also do like abdominal vasculature making sure that the blood flow within the organs and the abdominal cavity are working well, there's no like stenosis. So some jobs that you get into as a RVT or a vascular tech is maybe working at like a vein clinic. Some hospitals do have just a strictly vascular lab. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of general sonographers do become certified in vascular. Even though we're general sonographers, we do dive a little deep into it. Alrighty guys, so last track that I want to talk about is the cardiac track. You are RDCS, which is a registered diagnostic cardiac sonographer. There are different types of specialty exams that you could get into. You could do adult pediatric echoes or fetal echoes. Your job as a cardiac sonographer is basically just to evaluate the heart, make sure that the blood flow is going good, make sure that there are no congenital heart defects, and if there are congenital heart defects, is to be able to image it correctly in order to help out a cardiologist. I don't know much detail about cardiac just because I'm not a cardiac sonographer, but I would assume their job is very important. You are dealing with such a delicate organ, so I guess how it's broken up with for them is that you could deal with a adult heart or a pediatric heart. So I'm assuming with an adult heart you might develop like different complications when you become older. And with a pediatric heart that are probably less completely different because it's one, everything's smaller. Also when kids are still kind of developing into their bodies, uh, you kind of just like monitor it throughout their adolescence and then hopefully when they're adult, you know, they'll still get their, their heart echoes and kind of just make sure and maintain that the health and uh, blood flow is going good in the heart. Some jobs that you could go into if you are a cardiac sonographer, work in a hospital of course. You could work for a cardiologist in like a heart specialty building. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. Maybe that's like an outpatient setting. I do know people who love doing pediatric echoes. A lot of them worked at like children's hospitals. A very important thing that you should know when going into sonography in general, no matter what track you end up choosing, you do need to take the SPI board exams. That's a sonography principles and instrumentation exam. That's your ultrasound physics board exam. And I know that sounds super scary. You think like physics, I was totally awful at it. I'm not good at math, stuff like that but it's completely different. So it's the type of physics that's kind of dealing more about how the sound waves move. It's a lot more like conceptual rather than mathematical. Because when you learn ultrasound physics, it's the physics of how your ultrasound machine works. With the ARDMS credentialing, everybody has to take the SBI board exam. All right, so the last thing I wanna cover with you guys uh, when I'm explaining all these specialties, I'm sure you guys are all asking, can you cross train in any of these? The answer is yes. So some things you want to consider if you do want to cross train into a different uh, credentialing or registry is that you do need to have certain clinical hours and the educational requirements of it as well. So as long as you're able to show that you are clinically competent in doing these different types of ultrasound exams, then you should be able to cross train in any single one of them. One thing to consider if you do want to cross train in between different types of 
credentialing because these are all different types of sonographers okay then there is this rule called the five-year rule and it has to do with the SBI board exam if you are taking your SBI board exam and you haven't taken it in like the past five years you have to retake the SBI but it's only if you want to go to a completely different credentialing so if you want to do RDMS to RVT however the five-year rule doesn't apply to people who want to do different specialty exams underneath their own credentialing for example I'm RDMS and the first exam that I took was my OBGYN and then afterwards I took my abdomen but let's say I want to get fetal echo I could be able to take it and it doesn't have to apply with the five-year rule at all but if I wanted to become RVT then I would have to make sure to do it within the past five years of me taking my SPIs so that's just something to keep in mind if you do want to cross train in the future so if you are having trouble kind of deciding on which specialty you want to go into just kind of do your research on what type of work environment or exams you want to do if you want to get into something like a little bit more serious that's very important like so a lot of people do cardiac because you know the heart's so important people who want to be like more versatile want to have different exams throughout their day they go into general if you kind of want something chill do a lot of people go into vascular like I said you could always cross train into different things um, another thing that I really want to emphasize is that men can totally join this field okay I am advocating for so many men to start joining this field although this field is definitely like female dominant I don't know why what men could easily scan babies too. So now that I kind of gave you like a baseline of how everything works of what sonography is and all the different types, I want you to try to do your own research, okay? When I do make these videos, I try to give you guys so much guidance in order for you to help yourself. Every single ultrasound program in every single state, they're completely different. They have different requirements. They have different accreditation. I can't exactly tell you which one's the best for you. I can't tell you how much it costs because everything is completely different. Be sure to do all the research that you can that works best for you. What I did before I started my Sano journey was that I just kind of researched what all the accredited programs were around me. I kind of pinpointed what they all had in common as far as prerequisites. And also I kind of compared every single program as far as how much the cost was, how much the length is, and what the accreditation and what they had to offer me at the end of the program. So there are different type of programs that you could do. There are associate's programs, certification programs, and there's bachelor's programs. It doesn't matter if you have a degree, it doesn't matter which program you decide to go into. What really matters is that you're able to sit for your registry board exam. So as long as you clarify with the program that you're interested to go into, am I eligible to sit for my registry board exam afterwards? You don't want to get conned into it. And my advice is to always go with the cheapest option. All of the sonographers that I know we might have went to different schools, we might have paid different tuition, but at the end of the day, we all have the same credentialing. Try what's best for you. What I did, I went to my local community college and took the prerequisites there, and then I was able to transfer those credits into the program that I went into. Also, remember, with an ultrasound program, just like in any other medical program, schooling, it's going to be a lot of hard work, okay? You're going to need to develop a lot of self-discipline, time management. You need to find time to study, go to clinical rotations, which are like your internships. And I just want you to put that all into consideration when thinking about if you could handle it or if this schooling or if sonography is even right for you. That's just my simple clean cut advice that I could give you right now. I am wishing you guys all the best of luck on your sono journey. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I, you found it very helpful. If you have any other questions, Please feel free to follow me on Christy DMS on Instagram. I always try to answer all of my messages, and that's the best way to reach me. Just don't give up, work hard, do your research, and good luck. All right, thanks, guys.